uh, my attention has been drawn to some adverse mention in the affidavit of uh, Chairman Chebukati and uh, Professor Gulie with respect to the proceedings which took place at Bomas of Kenya and uh, therefore I'm drawn into the Supreme Court case which is ongoing. Uh, I'd like to start by admitting that I was at Bomas of Kenya several times and the meeting which they say took place at three o'clock I like to correct them a little bit they are suffering from a bit of uh, selective amnesia it was at 4 a.m. okay and I did try on several occasions to get audience with the commissioners and get audience specifically with Commissioner Chebukati after it became apparent that Professor Gulie was not able to address the issues that had brought up with him. The issue I'd brought up with him was that I'd received intelligence from one of the IBC officials who complained that some Form 34A were being brought down and they were being replaced by other Form 34A. He was not able to know exactly the location from which this was happening but it brought, it brought it to me once, the first time, and I reported this to the DCI, who dispatched officers to have an interview with this person. This gentleman was so terrified, uh, and uh, he actually mentioned the case that he had been threatened by Mr. Majan when he brought it up with him, that he should not play with him, he'll know who Mr. Majan is. Coming from the memory of uh, Musandu, I've never seen a more scared young man. He did take it up with one of his seniors, and the seniors, to corroborate the story, also told me, yes, he had received, uh, the senior had received the report, and there was absolutely nothing they could do unless I talk with the chairman himself. I tried several times to access the chairman, and actually a day passed, and the following morning when I came and I insisted I was going to see him, he had issued instructions to a senior police officer by the name Samuel Arab Kimel, who actually physically blocked me from trying to get into IBC uh, proceedings at Bomas of Kenya that day. I happened to have known the back door and I used a little bit of my public relations with the officers at the back and I managed to get in. Then, again, the officers of Mr. Chebukati refused to see me, saying that he was very busy and therefore I could not go in. I was further concerned by the fact that by that time, Chebukati had made a ruling that all the returning officers from the counties must report to him first before the verification, the papers are verified on the floor of the hall. I had concerns about that because he was himself closed into that, closed in that room with Mr. Molu and Mr. Marjan and therefore it was obvious to me that something opaque was taking place. Finally, I did insist that nobody was going to stop me from getting into that office. I'm a Kenyan citizen and I'm not trying to do anything wrong. So I told his own security people that I also have security and you'll have to shoot me to stop me from getting in. And I went in. And I found him with Molu, Marjan, and himself. And I brought these matters with him, and he told me he's busy now, he's got too many uh, returning officers waiting for him, so he'll not be able to attend to me. So he told me to come later. I was polite, I left, 
I came back later at 8 o'clock. Then he told me, come back probably about midnight. I came back at midnight. He told me, come back at 2. I came back at 2 and he was sleeping. So I agreed with the people who were there that let's let him have some sleep. He had not slept for many days. So I waited until 4 a.m. And that's the time when I drew the attention of somebody like Emo Swako, who is a personal friend and a few others, that we should go and confront him. I like to be able to state at this stage that Mr. Chibukati is not a stranger to me. Mr. Gulie are not, is not a stranger to me. And Mr. Molu are not strangers to me. He has made claims of what I said when 10 of us were in that room. All the commissioners were in that room. And Mr. Emos Wako was in that room and another lawyer, I don't know his name, Bonduo, whoever he is. So there are 10 of us in that room. For him to claim that I made some offers to him in front of those 10 is a tara diddle is a Tara diddled. Petty lie. But I want to go back to the fact that these people are not strangers to me. I want Mr. Chebukati to explain to me and to explain to Kenyans when he came to a secret location to meet with me and what was that discussion about. At least he's talked about where 10 were. What was the discussion when he came to a secret location to see me in Karen? Number two, I want Mr. Gulie, or Professor Gulie, and Mr. Molu to explain what they came to do in my house. What was that discussion about? And the drift of that discussion was more of auctioneers rather than commissioners. I want them to say they never came to my house. I will make the CCTV cameras available at my house so that those can be investigated by the DCI, whether I'm saying the truth or not. Because to my house, they came. I did give an account to Mr. Goulier that there was a worry that the Form 34As were being changed. And he told me that there's nothing he can do. He is not the returning officer. Mr. Chebukati is the returning officer. So I should go and talk to Chebukati. Yet he was on the floor when there were all kinds of strange excuses. There were the lights, the, the, the lights which were supposed to be shown on the documents. What do you call those lights? Yeah? UV lights. And when my, our team insisted that we want those UV lights to check the authenticity of those 34As which were arriving, all of a sudden, those, 34, those UV lights ran out of batteries. And in fact, I did ask an official if I could therefore then bring them batteries so that the UV lights could be used. So, I think that what he claim I said when I was meeting him at 3 or 4 a.m., whatever time he says, I think there were 10 others in that room. So I think those 10 others should be able to corroborate his story. But I'd like to be able to report here that Mr. Gulie, when we were having that discussion, left to go to the toilet for a very long time. And of course he left with his phone. And as we left that room after talking with them, the UDA officials, namely uh, Nanok and Veronica Maina, were at the door waiting for us to leave so that they could get in. I think I am acted within my right that if there is a complaint to be made, I should make that complaint. I didn't go in there alone. And I didn't talk to Mr. Chebukati alone when I presented those issues. And 
just as he wants to tell Kenyans about the discussion we had with him at the wee hours about 4M, I think he should be honest enough to tell Kenyans what he was discussing with Nanok and Veronica Maina as soon as we finished with him. Thank you very much. I'm ready to take some questions. You are always the first one. Hello, hello. Now that you've made a counterclaim of meeting Chebukati, what was the contents of that meeting at that, at that secret location? And two, what were Commissioners Molu and Gulie doing at your house, knowing that these are very key players in an electioneering period? Mr. Gulie and Mr. Molu did request to see me, and they said it was confidential, and I thought my house was the most confidential for them to come during that particular time. So I'm just telling you that they are not strangers to me. Uh, during the run-up to these elections, again, I'll be able to put this, if at all, it, uh, it will not divert the Supreme Court because I've looked at the replying affidavit of, uh, of, of Chebukati to the Supreme Court. I've not seen any substance. I think the only substance is to divert attention by <laughs> putting in the name of Rafael Tuju and have some you know, some, uh, something which is sensational. Um, but they did come to see me, and of course, Gulie did send uh, emissaries to me, two of them. I don't want to mention their names, just like I don't want to mention the name of the other person, because I think he's a witness at the Supreme Court, uh, and everybody needs a little bit of protection. I think I do have uh, better security than these two individuals, so I don't want to mention their names, but he sent them to me, and he was very, uh, he complained to me that the Likutumi Awatu Bonaukonga now. So basically, they were also coming to ask you for an off. Well, uh, I just said that from my uh, discussions previously with them, I was dealing more with auctioneers than commissioners. What was the question of the meeting between you and Chibukati? I would want him to be able to state that himself since he has stated what we discussed uh, on, uh, on that Monday, Tuesday night, uh, in the public domain, I dare him to stay. Where was this secret location? Because you know that you have, uh, you have businesses in time. Is it at one of the businesses? And what could have been the contents of this? And what could have been the contents of this meeting? Was he also auctioning or even trying to solicit a bribe from your side? Because this matter is in court, and because I have to consult my lawyers before I speak too much, I thought that whatever I've told you this up to now is appropriate as a matter of public interest. SG, you have disclosed your house. They met you at your house, yes. right? Why can't you disclose this secret location? I mean, it could be a public place. Why can't you just disclose it? You disclose your house. My you house. A secret my, my house. I can disclose. A secret location may be, lo be, may be belonging to somebody else. It is not appropriate for me to expose that. Yes. K Katibu, thank you. Uh, are you from Citizen TV? This is, um, you have mentioned secret location and uh, two commissioners who visited you at your house and you said that you will provide the CCTV footages to that effect. I just want to understand because uh, you are the executive director of the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition Political and, and Party. And former Secretary General of Jibu. And former Ariada MP as well. And was this prompted... And former newscaster as well. Uh, thank you. And <laughs> was this rather prompted by this affidavit? And as an aggrieved party, were Chebukati and uh, Gulia, not to mention you in, in their affidavits, would you still have provided this before the court? Uh, I would not have. Why? why? And you feel uh, an aggrieved party? I explained to you why. Um, I do have, given the fact that I'm no stranger to the political arena, all right? I was there in 2017. These are people I know, these are people I've worked for, I've worked with rather. Take for example the time when um, IBC chairman made a ruling that the parties had to reveal their running mate within a certain time. If you recall, I was in the team who went to appeal against that and I did make uh, a few calls to him to explain to him and he said he had set up a meeting at IBC 
so I should go there and uh, prosecute my case in front of him and the other commissioners. And indeed, we prevailed. He did not, did, he did not only postpone uh, the naming of the, uh, the deputy presidential candidates for a few days, he did it for three weeks. So these are people that I've worked with. I'll give you another phone conversation which I had with him. I did, so I'm, I'm ready to surrender the, the, the phone logs that I have with Mr. Chepukati to DCI and anybody else, uh, the right authority to scrutinize. Um, in the, in the run-up to the elections, there was a challenge of uh, logistics. If you talk to anybody who is farming flowers or vegetables trying to get space on aircrafts going abroad, they'll tell you that uh, since COVID, there was always a challenge with getting aircrafts to carry a lot of cargo. So I did talk to him and I told him, look, I just want you not to have a blind spot. Please uh, make sure that you, you, know, you, you organize the logistics for the cargo of, uh, of papers coming into the country, I mean ballot papers coming to the country in good time because you may just find that when you are ready to do this, uh, there's no cargo space available in the country. So engagement with the commission is something that has been part of my job, not only now but in 2017 as well. So I cannot go public with every discussion that we have on phone or on WhatsApp uh, because it's not essential. But, but when it is essential, when now they have put an affidavit yes. against me, Tara Diddle, in every sense of the word, I think I'm within my right to also explain to the Kenyans my side of the story. And Thank you very much. And would that be part of the content in your affidavit before the Supreme Court? You said you can detail the, every the aspect of it. Has been, yep. Actually, I, I, I'd wanted to share the affidavit with okay. you, okay. but um, right now my lawyers are working on it, okay. and um, they were not ready to give it to me so that uh, I could share it with you. As soon as it is there, I mean, affidavit, I may decide what I want to say, but as you know, lawyers will tell you, no, no, you can't say that. But that's within my right to decide what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. But this bit, I felt that... I should tell Kenyans. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciated this secret meeting between yourself and Chebukati. Chebukati himself. So he, so he, so he, so he, yeah. Who initiated the secret meeting between me and Chebukati? It was Chebukati himself.